Hi there, today's lesson is the applications of Newton's second law. This is part of A-level physics mechanics. So what I'm going to do is initially show you how to do this type of question, the rocket question. So what we're going to do is calculate the engine thrust required to accelerate the space shuttle at 4 meters per second squared from its launch pad. So we're given the mass of the shuttle and gravitational field strength, we're just going to use 9.8. Actually, yes, let's use 9.81. There we go. So, Newton's second law, you'll know from GCSE, is simply F equals MA, where force is measured in Newtons, mass is measured in kilograms, and acceleration is meters per second squared. At A level, however, you'll probably see this version, the sum of the forces is equal to MA. If you've not seen this this symbol before, that's sigma. It's a it's a Greek letter. So the sum of the forces is MA. The best way to show this is just to do an example. So we've got the engine thrust. In fact, let me clear all this. Let's go with the sum of the forces is equal to MA. So the sum of the forces, we've got the engine thrust going upwards, we've got the weight acting down, and the acceleration is obviously going to be up. I'm going to take up as positive in this scenario. It's up to you which way you take positive. You'll see why in a second. So if we're going to sum the forces, we've got the engine thrust going up, so that's positive thrust, T, minus the weight, Mg, because that's going down, is equal to Ma. Then you just need to rearrange to get thrust. So thrust is equal to MA plus MG. I'm just going to factorise that at the same time. Then just put your numbers in. So thrust would be the mass, which is 3 times 10 to the 6 in this case. Multiplied by A plus G. So 9.81 plus the 4 which is 13.81. Multiply the 13.81 by 3 times 10 to the 6. And we get a big number. If I press the engineering button, and then do a little standard form, I get 4.1 times 10 to the 7 newtons. So I'll just write my answer there. 4.1 times 10 to the 7 newtons. So that's the example. Hopefully you followed that okay. Let's move on. So this is the lift question. There are five different questions. If you wish, you can have a go at them. You just need to apply Newton's second law like we have been doing. If you want to see a few examples, just keep watching. If not, just pause. So the first one. A lift of mass 800 kilograms carries a passenger of mass 80 kilograms. Calculate the tension in the cable when the lift is stationary. So it's an application of Newton's second law. So on the lift, we've got the tension going upwards. We've got the weight that acts down. And the lift is stationary, so there's no acceleration. So obviously you've probably seen intuitively that the tension must equal the weight. But I'll just show you if we apply Newton's second law, it will tell us that anyway. So some of the forces will take up as positive. So tension minus mg equals ma. But obviously the acceleration is zero because it's not moving. So ma just equals zero. So we have t minus mg equals zero. Therefore, t must equal mg. So if you just do the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength, so 800, multiplied by, sorry, plus the 80, so 8, 880, multiplied by G, 9.81. Put that into your calculator. To get 8633 newtons, 8,633. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. 
If you wish to have a go, please do. If you've already had a go, let's go. So same again, but this time it's accelerating upwards at one meter per second, so quick diagram. We've got the tension going up, the weight going down, and this time the acceleration upwards. So I'm going to take up as positive. So any value going up is positive, any value going down will be negative. So let's apply Newton's second law. The sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So the sum of the forces is the tension minus the weight, as the weight is acting in the opposite direction, is equal to ma. Then just rearrange to get the tension. So tension is equal to ma plus mg. And then factorize. And then just put your numbers in. So the mass is 880. And then a plus g. So we've got 1 plus 9.81. which gives us 9,513 newtons. Hopefully that's okay. Let's move to the next one. So this time we're moving upwards, but slowing down at 2.5 meters per second squared. So let's draw the lift again. So we've got tension going up. We've got the weight going down, mg. And this time it's it's moving upwards but slowing down, so the acceleration is acting downwards. So let's see what happens here. So we'll take up as positive once again. So the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So the sum of the forces is tension minus mg equals ma. Acceleration is going down, but we'll deal with that in a second. So tension would be ma plus mg, but the acceleration is negative. So we could do that if we wish. So I'm going to write this as mg minus ma, and then factorize, so mg minus a. So the tension will be the mass, 880, and then g minus a, so 9.81 minus the 2.5. Put that in your calculator. Gives us... 6,433 newtons. Okay, let's go to the next one. So a lift of mass 800 kilograms carries a passenger of mass 80 kilograms. Yet again, calculate the tension in the cable and the lift is accelerating downwards at 2 meters per second squared. So again, similar to the last one. Just worded differently. Well, and the fact that it's going in a different direction. But in terms of the application, you'll see in a moment. So tension acts up. The weight, mg, acts down. And we are accelerating downwards. I'm going to take up as positive. So some of the forces is equal to ma. So tension going up minus mg is equal to minus ma. Then just rearrange, so tension is equal to, I'm going to say mg minus ma. So the mass, mass g minus a. And it's just the numbers again, so it's 880, 9.81, minus two. Put that in your calculator and you'll get the answer which is 6873 newtons. Okay, one more. So on this one, moving downwards but slowing down at 3 meters per second. So I'm just going to sketch the lift again. Put the tension going up. The weight acts down, mg. And then apply Newton's second law. So the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So up is positive. Oh, sorry, it's uh, moving downwards, but slowing down at three meters per second. So the acceleration is upwards. So some of the forces, so tension minus mg is equal to positive ma because it's going up. So tension would be ma plus mg or m a plus g. 
put that in our calculator. So 880 the brackets, A plus G, so 3 plus 9.81. And we get 11,273 newtons. Okay, so if you want to try them again, if you got any wrong, all you have to do is rewind. If not, let's move on. So here's a quick assessment question. So if you want to have a go at it, please do. All right, let's go. So a 10 newton force and a 15 newton force act on a five kilogram body. Calculate the maximum and minimum force and the maximum and minimum acceleration. So the maximum force is very simple. It's just 10 plus 15 to give us 25 newtons. And the minimum force possible is if we put the forces in opposite directions to each other. So 15 take away 10, which would be 5 newtons. Now for the maximum and minimum acceleration. Acceleration, Newton's second law, is just force over mass. So the maximum acceleration will be 25 divided by 5, which is 5 metres per second squared. And the minimum acceleration, again, force over mass, is equal to 5 newtons divided by 5 kilograms, which is 1 meters per second squared. Quite a straightforward one. Let's move on to something a bit trickier. So if you wish to have a go at this, please do. Just pause it. So a rocket car has a mass of 10,000 kilograms and, a point in, and at a point in time, a thrust of 270 kilonewtons. The car accelerates at 2.9 meters per second squared. Calculate the air resistance. So it's just an application of Newton's second law once again. So this time, I'm just going to draw my rocket car. As you can see, I'd make a great designer. So then we just apply Newton's second law. So the sum of the forces is equal to MA. And the forces that are acting on this car is the thrust and some air resistance. So thrust will take right as positive, the way it's accelerating. So thrust minus the air resistance is equal to MA. Then just rearrange to get air resistance. So if we take the resistance to that side and bring the acceleration over, we end up with thrust minus MA equals the air resistance. So it's 270,000 minus mass times acceleration. So 2.9 times 10,000 is 29,000. And that will give us R. So pop that in your calculator. And we get 241,000. Newtons. If you want to press engineer, it'll give you 241 times 10 to the 3 or 2.41 times 10 to the 5 Newtons. Hopefully that went okay. Let's move on to the next one. Ah. So have a go at this one if you wish, and then I'll take you through the answer. A crane lifts building materials of mass 800 kilograms at a constant speed. Reference using Newton's second law why the tension T is equal to the weight. So if we apply Newton's second law for this crane that's lifting a mass. So let me just draw this on. Some more design work. So it's got weight mg and there's tension acting upwards. So if we actually apply Newton's second law mathematically, even without numbers, we get the sum of the forces equal to MA. So the sum of the forces, let's take up as positive, we would have tension minus MG equals MA. But of course, if it's travelling at a constant speed, as said in the question, the acceleration is zero. So tension would just equal the weight. And then in an exam, you could just write a sentence to comment on what you just did. Let's move on to the next one. So 
So if you want to have a go at this, you can have a go now. You will need some of different equations. I can write them down. You will need the equation for GPE, gravitational potential energy, which is from GCSE. So GPE is equal to MGH. M is mass, G is gravitational field strength, H is height. You will also need power, which is work done over time or energy over time. And the efficiency equation, which is also from GCSE, which is useful over total. So if you didn't have, a, have any idea at first, this may help. So if you wish to have a go using these help, these help equations, please do. If you still need help, I'm going to go through it now, or if you wish to check. So let's have a look. The crane lifts building materials of mass 800 kilograms at a constant speed. The crane lifts the mass 20 meters in 15 seconds. The motor has an efficiency of 80%. Calculate the power of the motor. So let's have our crane, or just a mass, that's being lifted. So we've got weight mg and tension t. And it's been lifted vertically. So, first of all, we need to, in fact, this is different. We can just do power is energy divided by time. And energy is the work done, which is the gravity. So, mgh over time. So, the mass is 800 times g, 9.81, times the height which is 20 meters, and that happens in 15 seconds. So if you put that into your calculator, that will give you the power, which is 10, 4, 6, 4 watts. However, we haven't finished. That is the useful energy transfer, and we know it's useful because that's the energy that we've gained in lifting the mass. It says in the question that the motor has an efficiency of 80%. So we need to use the efficiency equation. So efficiency... I'll just write F, like that, is equal to the useful energy divided by the total energy. So the useful energy, I'll, I'll just write useful over total, then I'll put the numbers in. So the efficiency is 0 0.8, equals the useful power, 10464, and then divide by the total. So we just need to rearrange to get the total. So total is 10464 divided by 0 0.8. So that gives us a total energy, or total power, sorry, total energy per second of 13,080 watts. I'll round that to 13.1 kilowatts. Okay, let's move on. So if you wish, have a go at this one. It's very similar to stuff that we've already done. It's just more practice. And I'll take you through the answer now. The crane lifts building materials of mass 800 kilograms at a constant speed. However, initially, the acceleration is 3 meters per second squared. There should be a minus there. Calculate the initial tension in the cable. So what we need to do is figure out the... Initial tension whilst the materials are accelerating. So it's just an application of Newton's second law. So let's draw a quick diagram. So we've got the weight acting down, mg, and tension acting upwards. So the sum of the forces is equal to ma. So we'll take up as positive as we're accelerating upwards. So tension minus mg is equal to ma. So the tension, like we've done so many times previously, is just MA plus MG, which is M A plus G, just factorised. So the mass is 800. Acceleration is 3 plus 9.81. Put that into your calculator. We get 10,248 10, newtons. If you press engineer, you'll get 10.2 times 10 to the 3 which is fine, so 10.2 kilonewtons. Okay, hopefully that went okay. If you need to try anything again, just feel free to rewind. 
and I'll see you soon. Thank you.